Howdy folks, welcome back to Doing Brew. On today's episode, we're going to be covering waterproofing a tub shower surround as well as the bathroom floor. I've done a whole lot of bathroom remodels over the years and I never understand why some people will just stop with their waterproofing at the tub or shower when a majority of the leaks that happen are when the tub overflows or maybe the toilet backs up and overflows and the water leaks down through the floor and ruins the ceiling below. So with the current waterproofing materials out on the market nowadays that are actually pretty easy to apply, there's no reason to stop at just the tub and shower. Let's go ahead and waterproof just about the entire bathroom. And always a quick program note, thank you very much for all my subscribers. I've really had a huge increase in subscribers over the last couple of months. To me, it's really humbling to have so many new subscribers that shows me that you like the content I'm putting out. And quite honestly, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. And another thing, I've had a lot of people ask me questions in the comments or sending me emails directly to doandbrew at gmail.com. In a lot of cases, those folks are surprised that I ever reply back to their questions. Of course I would. That's why I ask you to ask me questions so I can help you with your projects. I can't believe that there are some folks out there that are making these videos and then when somebody has a technical question for them or a design question, they don't respond to them. That's amazing to me. So if you have any questions about any projects that you have going on, please give me a shout. I'll do the best I can to get back to you as soon as I can and help you out as much as possible. Now I've actually been getting a little bit of grief from my longtime subscribers that Doing Brew has been doing a whole lot more doing than brewing. So at the end of this episode, I'm going to give a review of a dogfish head pumpkin ale. It's a seasonal ale only put out at this time of the year, the fall, from one of my favorite breweries, Dogfish Head. So that's at the end of this video. I hope you stick around for that. Now in this video, I'm going to use two different types of waterproofing membrane for two different bathrooms that I've worked on. One is the yellow stuff. One is the red stuff. Now they both have their pros and cons, but quite honestly, I think I like the red stuff a little bit better. It goes on a little smoother and I think it dries a little bit faster. But there's a whole host of different membranes out there. I'll leave it up to you to decide which one is best for you. Now some folks might begin their waterproofing project just by starting straight with the membrane. But as you saw in the Duroc install video, I really like to put down a couple layers of caulking beforehand. Let that set up overnight and then come in the next morning and start applying the waterproofing membrane. So the first thing we'll do is begin applying a liberal application of caulk at all of our joints. For both the red and the yellow waterproofing membrane, I recommend a one mil thickness, which of course is applied in many coats. Upwards of five to six coats to get to a full one mil thickness. Now the first step after caulking is to apply this special self-adhesive mesh tape. This is something different than drywall tape in that there's, the mesh is an open screen. And as you paint on the waterproofing membrane, the mesh acts as a scaffolding to give the membrane something to grip onto while it sets up and dries. And usually only about two to three, maybe four coats to get full coverage and complete watertight integrity over any joints that you're painting over with your, with your mesh tape. Uh, but remember, you're going to want to apply upwards of six coats to get to that one mil thickness. So as you can see, I'm applying the mesh tape over any joints and in any corners, whether an inside or an outside corner. Now this is the yellow waterproofing and crack preventive membrane that I'll be putting down in the first bathroom project of this video. And here's a shot of the red waterproofing membrane that I'll be putting down later in this video in a different bathroom. Now I'm starting with the floor. I've applied the tape in the corner. I'm applying a heavy coat of the waterproofing membrane 
directly onto the cement board on the floor and the drywall on the wall. Now, I'm not intending for this to become a swimming pool, but I just want to ensure that if any water splashes out of the tub, it's not going to find its way through the floor and possibly put some dark spots on the ceiling below. Here applying the waterproof membrane over the mesh tape, over a joint where two pieces of the cement board come together. Now, what I tend to do is put my first coats heavy on anywhere where I've applied the mesh tape. And then I'll do the final top coats over the entire project, getting another three coats on up to that one mil thickness. Throughout this video and most other Do and Brew videos, we'll be enjoying the music of Jonathan Jones. Check the description for links to Jonathan's YouTube videos and for places where you can actually purchase the music and enjoy it yourself. So as you can see, putting on a heavy coat over top of the mesh tape. And you're going to want to let this set up for a good 8 to 10 hours before reapplying. And you'll know because it changes colors significantly. It goes on a nice uh, bright yellow or with the red stuff, uh, a nice pink. And they dry a darker yellow or a darker red. You want to wait till it's nearly fully cured before applying another coat. And as you can see, I'm, I'm really just kind of gooping it in there and then smoothing it out. Going too heavy is not a problem. And here at the niche, or anywhere else where you believe that water may settle, you want to pay a little extra attention. Don't skimp on this stuff, folks, because this is going to make or break your project. Now really, there's not a whole lot of narration that can be done. I'm pretty much doing the same thing over and over, over all the joints and eventually the entire surface area of the tub shower surround. I'm gonna speed things up here just a little bit so that uh, I don't waste too much of your all's time watching uh, me paint and then watching the paint dry. I'll take a moment here just to let y'all know that I've got a ton of videos still to come. Uh, the bathroom that I'm working on here in this video, I actually finished months ago, and I'm almost done with a second bathroom. All of which have individual videos coming out with uh, specific pieces and parts of those projects that I think would be good for you all to see and helpful for your projects. Plus, I've got a lot of other projects that are in the can. I had the, the video done and ready to go. I've just got to find time to do the editing and, and post it. So there's a lot of good material still to come here on Doing Brew. Now here I'm applying the waterproofing membrane along the base of the tub. And it's important to note that here, as well as all other joints, I put down that mesh tape. Now the concrete board sits up pretty snug to the tub itself, but I just want to make sure I had something for the waterproofing membrane to adhere to while it sets up. And again, just to ensure that I've got a waterproof bathroom floor and I don't have any leaks on the ceiling below. Now here's a look at the membrane that's nearly fully cured, probably at about the six to seven hour point. And you can see that in areas where it went on relatively light, it's already dry, and the areas that I went on liberally or very heavy, it still needs a little bit of drying time. Okay, and so I put on, gosh, about five coats real heavy with the brush in all the niches, all the corners, all the joints, and all of the rock-on screw holes. Now, 
as you can see, that's a pretty heavy coating of the waterproofing. And of course, you, you don't want to rush things here. You want to take your time. Uh, you really only have one chance to get this part of the project done right. Because once you put up your tile, after all the time and expense of installing a tile, you certainly don't want to have to take it off because you've got a water leak somewhere. Okay, now I'm going to show you a different bathroom and a different waterproofing membrane, the red stuff. And just as before, we're going to apply our mesh tape. And a lot of these steps are the same, so I'm not going to take up a whole lot of your valuable time. I'm going to speed things up here just a bit so you can see that generally the application of the red waterproofing membrane is the same as the yellow. And as I said at the beginning of the video, I kind of prefer the red. But you want to stay tuned because I do a little bit more in-depth waterproofing of the floor, uh, which you may find valuable. Plus, don't forget, beer review coming up at the end of this video. So, working on waterproofing the floor. Basically, it's an inside corner, and you need to put your mesh tape down in such a way as you're going to provide a good structure for your waterproof membrane to adhere to. Now, it's okay if you push it into that gap just a little bit. You just want to make sure that you don't have too much of a curve that's going to get in the way of your floor tile. Now, I'll put on a liberal heavy coat of the waterproofing membrane on the, on the tape where it meets the floor. I'll let that set up for a moment. It kind of holds things together a little bit better. And then I'll come back and apply along the wall and in the crux of that corner itself. Just a day with no I keep a so as you can see by the dark color of the membrane on the floor, it's set up and it's uh, adhered to the floor so that it's a little bit easier this way to go back and apply it to the crux of the corner and the wall itself. And you can see, I'm putting that on pretty heavy. But believe it or not, as the waterproofing membrane dries, it's gonna shrink a little bit and you're gonna have some holes in there after your first coat, even maybe your second. That's why you're gonna put a good four to five coats on the floor to work up to that one mil thickness. Now I've moved over to a time lapse here just to give you a, a quick shot of rolling on the final three to four coats. Now as you can see in all the corners inside and out and all the screw holes there's a, the deep red dried membrane over top of all those areas and each one of those areas at this point has at least three to four coats on it if not more and I'm going to roll on a final three coats over everything to ensure that this bathroom is fully waterproofed and will not leak. So as you can see, applying the waterproofing membrane is not that difficult to do. Yeah, it's time consuming, but it's a valuable step to properly complete before you start your tile installation. So if you have any questions about waterproofing, please give me a shout either in the comments or at doingbrew at gmail.com. And now it's time for the long-awaited beer review. And again, I'm going to be reviewing Dogfish Head Pumpkin Ale. Their seasonal brew only comes out this time of the year, and I haven't had this batch yet, so I'm looking forward to trying it. So, a little bit about the pumpkin ale right off the bat. Uh, Amazingly, Dogfish Head is one of the first breweries to brew their own pumpkin ale. So it's kind of the grandfather of pumpkin ales, if you will. And it really does encompass the taste of the seasons. 
It's brewed with pumpkin, of course, uh, along with allspice, brown sugar, nutmeg, cinnamon. So all of the different flavors that you tend to associate with fall and in America, the, the Thanksgiving holiday. Now this is not a terribly strong ale at about 7% alcohol, uh, but it certainly is more than your standard off the shelf um, large brewery beer. Let's go ahead and crack this one open. Take a look at it. So Dogfish Head classifies this as a brown ale. Nice pour there. But it's a little bit more ambery or orange than brown. But I'm not going to worry about that too much. And it sure does have that nice pumpkin ale aroma to it. As you can see, it poured with a, with a pretty nice head, a pretty good amount of carbonation and that head tends to dissipate pretty quickly. It has that real nice pumpkin ale aroma to it, and you can really, you can really pick up on the, the allspice and the cinnamon. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. That has a real nice uh, fall flavor to it. And to me, uh, I'm a big Oktoberfest guy, so I, I pick up a lot of uh, Oktoberfest uh, traditional German beer flavor. And there's this... And the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the allspice really comes through. Honestly, I'm not picking up a lot of pumpkin. There are other pumpkin ales out there where you really taste that 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 pumpkin pie uh, flavor, a real bready flavor, but I'm not picking that up in this, uh, although it is certainly a, a good beer. A great beer to serve during any kind of a Halloween party, uh, during your Thanksgiving dinner, or any kind of a fall uh, get together with friends or family. Now this is a good beer. I would be happy to drink this or serve this to, to friends at, at any occasion in the fall. There are other pumpkin ales that have a bit more pumpkin flavor, if that's what you're going for. And as a big fan of Dogfish Head, this is a good solid dogfish brew. So I would give this uh, three hammers out of four. Four hammers are reserved for the absolute best brews out there. But this is one that I would certainly drink um, and certainly one to serve to friends and family. And at 7%, it's not overly strong. And honestly, You don't get floored by a strong alcohol flavor, which, which really I like. I don't like to pick up a whole lot of that alcohol flavor in my beers. So overall, real happy with the Dogfish Head Pumpkin Ale. Certainly a beer that I would enjoy drinking. Certainly a beer that I will purchase more of. And certainly a beer that I'd be happy to serve to friends and family throughout the fall holiday season. So hey guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, if you have any questions about this beer, please let me know. And as always, best of luck on your projects, and I look forward to seeing you back here on Doin' Brew. Take care, folks.